What's up, Des? Hey, how's How it doing? going? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> All right. So you want to go ahead and introduce who you are and what you do to everybody? Okay. I am Tess Darling, and I am a full-time artist since February of this year. So I paint and I draw wildlife right now. That's my current tangent. I used to do figures and portraits out of school, and then I switched to landscapes, and now I'm on wildlife. So. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So uh, we're going to start. Uh, what we're going to do is go through some questions, and then uh, we'll get some recommendations from you. And then at the end, we'll take a Q&A from the audience. Um, but for right now, let's start way back when, since somebody reminded me that she's getting okay. old. So tell me about <laughs> your childhood and where you grew up and siblings and parents and what was it like for you growing up? Okay. Um, well, I grew up early on in Florida. I was born in Miami, um, oh. but I remember Gainesville a lot. So I was one of those kids running around barefoot, catching lizards and frogs there in a go. group of other kids in the neighborhood pack. Um, so I went on camping trips a lot too with my dad. My dad's Australian, so he really enjoyed the outdoors. He always took us outside camping, um, which I, I think that's why I do landscapes and wildlife right now, because I have an appreciation for that. Um, so, and I remember this one time we were catching lizards and frogs and everyone put them in this big terrarium, just like stacked full of tree frogs, which is a little bit <laughs> cruel, but that's, you know, that's what kids do. And I remember pushing it over and being so happy to let them all free and let them all go. And the kids got mad for a split second, but they were like, oh no, okay, that's probably what's best. So it's just like this care for animals that I had at a young age was something that's stayed with me forever. Um, but then also uh, drawing. I've been drawing ever since I could remember. Um, I mean, I remember staying in my room and drawing animal stories like movies, like one piece of paper would be one scene and then you'd go to the next and the next and the next. Awesome. So it'd be just like entire movie I would lay out in my bedroom uh, and then I'd throw it all away. So Aww. yeah, because I was embarrassed uh, for people to see it. I was embarrassed because my mom wanted to show everybody in my drawings and they were so personal to me so i would start throwing them away so no <laughs> so no one would see them so um, so you said your yeah. dad was australian yeah so i've been to australia a few times to um in tasmania because we would visit family over there um and i've seen the great barrier reef before it's been bleached out mm. now um when i was 10 i went snorkeling in the barrier reef um so that's also been a major influence for me, just those experiences that no one ever gets to, you know, have. I was really lucky and that my dad appreciated that kind of stuff and took us out there. Um, so it was like spending time outside and then also like, you know, inside is where the drawing happened and inside, I mean, I was also a middle child. So I had a younger brother and an older sister. So, um, and you know, siblings would gang up on each other and I would find solace in my room whenever there's a fight or something. I mean, or you would go into your room because you would get in trouble and be grounded. But then that's where I would draw. That's, you know, I had to rely on myself in order for entertainment. So it just, it was a natural thing for me. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. So how did, how did your parents meet? How did he end up in America? Uh, my dad came over from uh, Australia to Florida um, with my mom, they went to college together, um, Florida State University, and um, he is an environmental biologist oh, too. Wow. So, and then my mom is a nurse practitioner. Um, but they met, um, and my mom's like five years older than my dad, so um, they met in school. But I think it was my dad teaching for graduate school or something and he met my mom um but he's got work in antarctica uh he used to study um, those very um high intense environment cells um that would they would use for re research for mars and um so he there's a, a 
his research is published with this um, another group of scientists, and I forget the leader's name, um, but it's in the 1970s, and you can look it up. Um, but they met, and um, and then they got divorced, and so there was also they were working all the time. So it was like my dad working, but he would take us for a couple of weeks and then my mom working all the time. So then there's also me by myself, you know, while they're working or going to after school or something, um, which was also more outside stuff um, or tennis. Tennis was a huge part of my life um, for 11 years. You still play? Um, no, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't play. Well. I do not. <laughs> It's, it's, a, it's a whole world and I never felt like I was a part of it. Um, it was just, you know, country clubs and certain, you know, demeanors. And it was very competitive. My mom taught me to be very, very competitive. So it wasn't like, you know, like I was making friends with everybody. It was all about, you know, you're going against this player and it's all very solitary. And so, um, so that preoccupied a lot of my time um, throughout middle school, high school, uh, first year of college was just practice, tennis tournaments, tennis camps. Um, so I was very tired all the time, just living to have energy to play tennis and more practice and then, you know, coming back. So, wow. So it's, so yeah. it was intense. Like there. Were... Yeah. So there was no like art camp for me. There was no like art school. Um, my mom thought that athletics were more important um, in terms of keeping our mind preoccupied. And I mean, I've learned to be healthy and to exercise later in life and to keep up with that. So that's been really good. You know, when you're down, you go out for a run or something, you keep in shape. Um, so, you know, long-term goal, it was very, uh, it's a great habit to have and tennis is really easy to pick up again. Um, but the last match that I played, the girl said that she won when she actually lost. So that was when I've had it, I was just like, you know, this is not, this is not for me. Um, there's a lot of like cheating involved and stuff and, wow. and I, I was wow. never going to be a cheating. pro place. Yeah. So hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. Cheating? Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, they don't have referees all the time for line calls. So your opponent does the line calling. And so they can call balls that are in, out, and they get the point. Um, they can, if you're not keeping track of the score, they can mess with that. Um, there's a whole mind game involved. You know, you can go off to the side and tie your shoe to make sure that you get your opponent off rhythm. You know, there's like little games, little mind games like that, that happen. So, um, so yeah. what were you like in high school? I mean, I, I know tennis was, a, must've been a big part yeah. of it. But... Yeah. So I, so I knew a lot of athletes. Um, so I hung out with athletes a lot, but I also like, I hung out with a lot of different people. I mean, I had a few friends that were like a core group, but I remember hanging out with different cliques. It was like every year I hung out with a different clique or a different group of people. Um, so it was, I don't know. I was trying to be a well-rounded person. Um, and I, yeah, I think, you know, I hope I was perceived as that, but at the same time, you know, I didn't want a lot of attention either. I just wanted to get along with everybody. Um, so, I took art class in high school, um, but I would just kind of be off on my own painting and drawing and, um, but people took notice, you know, you can't help but take notice if there's someone who's been drawing their entire life and then, you know, those are the results. Um, so I, I would do art contests and stuff and um, I would do paintings for the school to see, like we had a little art gallery and everything, um, but, the, I wasn't, I wasn't like an artsy kind of kid. Like I never dressed like an artsy person. I never really talked about art. Um, it was always just like a very, you know, just general friendliness. Um, and I think it just had to do with the fact that I was always busy with tennis and I was always, and I knew about, you know, I, I would have, um, I'd find happiness in my solitude and in drawing um, after school, even in after tennis practice. Um, so I didn't feel like I had to, you know, um, really rebel or, um, 
go outside the box or anything. It was just seem, I don't know, it seemed like a very content kind of few years. So, and I knew they weren't going to be my best years, but at the same time, they weren't the worst for me either. So, so, um, so I mean, was that when you, I mean, I know you've always been an, an artist in a way, like you've always been drawn, but when did it, was it during high school where you were like, when you learned the actual, um, the rules and everything about art? No. Know? Yeah, no, it wasn't until college when I even started taking it seriously. Oh, really? Like I never thought I was going to be an artist at all. It was just something I always did. And I don't know why I did it. It was like an impulse. It was just something I had to do. Um, so it wasn't until like even my third year in college where I thought, well, maybe, you know, I could do something with this. And even mm -hmm. it took a, you know, a professor to kind of call me out on it too, because he saw that I had something, but he also saw that I didn't take it seriously or that, you know, I didn't really care as much as I should have because it's something that's always been there. So I didn't think it was anything special. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a moment where I was doing a, a portrait of one of my friends and I took the picture on my cell phone, which is a no-no. And then I was painting from my cell phone picture, like with my cell phone up here and painting this huge canvas, which is also a huge no-no. And he, you know, circled around the professor and he was like, you're, you know, you're setting yourself up for failure right now, Tess. And I was just like, well, I could do it still, you know, I, but at the same time, it's like, you know, after I started doing still life, which is like, you know, the cylinders, the apples, like the really boring stuff. Um, I, I started to, it was like a moment where I just enjoyed doing that. Like I found such peace in feeling like, oh, this is homework. Like I can do this. This is kind of awesome. So then I started, um, you know, missing out on like concerts and things and hanging out with friends to, to do homework basically, which was drawing, which was working on pottery. I mean, they have you take all the studio courses in college. So I got to dabble in every single art form um, to see what I liked, what I didn't like. Um, but okay. yeah, it wasn't until then where I was like, you know what, this could actually be my career. Yeah, so, speaking, of, speaking of which, let's, let's go back. Like where, where and why did you decide to go to that specific college? I, well, I was going to play tennis some more um, at UNCA, uh, so University of North Carolina in Asheville. Um, I was going to maybe dabble in biology, maybe graphic design, and they had some good programs there. Um, maybe art too, but it really wasn't a priority for me even then. Um, but I liked the environment. I liked how small it was. I liked how it was tucked away. Um, so. And I liked how far enough it was from Chapel Hill, um, which is where I spent the last part of my childhood in high school and middle school. Um, so it just seemed like a pretty perfect kind of all around good ease into uh, a new environment. Cause I still didn't know what I wanted yet. You know, it was just another life step that I knew I had to take. Um, so it was just very, yeah, very general guidelines. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's amazing how many people I talk to when they get into college and there's this uh, misconception that everybody should know what they're doing, like why they're right. going to college. And the most successful people have been the ones that don't realize what they're doing until junior year or so where they're like, okay, well I think yeah. junior, senior year, they might even change majors and then they end up being really successful at what they, what they do. So I think it's a huge misconception, but that's, you're just another success story, yeah. I think, of like uh, someone who didn't go in knowing what they wanted to do and then come out and be. It's. I think college is meant to be a place where you kind of find yourself. You know, you find out yeah. what you're inter interested in and what you're good at. But that's awesome. Because um, then you could always take classes and can have you can have education later too. Like once you find out, then you can really hone in on it and understand, you know, why you need to be studying this or why you need to take it seriously. So yeah. and my mom was the one who really pushed all like three of us to go to college and just do it. Just go, just take action and don't worry about, you know, just figure out what happens once you're there. It's just that exercise of just like going through with that education. So, That's awesome. yeah. Um, so talk a little bit about the classes that you had to take and like which ones you think had the most influence 
on your current artwork? Um, so I was very much into figurative um, drawing and painting. That's kind of what they pushed at the program because there were a few figurative artists. Um, uh, Tammy Beldu was a professor and she's amazing. She does graphite drawings. Um, she has work at our local fine art gallery all the time. Um, and I, uh, so it, that, it was all figurative classes, you know, live drawing nudes, um, still life drawing, uh, painting, painting in acrylic oil, um, so then, like I said, they, you know, require you for the bachelor's of fine art degree to take every single studio class available. Um, so it takes you five years to complete college instead of four, um, to make room for all of that education. So then I had to take ceramics, um, and sculpture and, you know, a general 2d design, 3d design. Um, but it was really the drawing and painting classes where I felt like, you know, at home, you know, the, all the easels are surrounding the subject to be painted, either a model or some still life. And there's low lighting except for the spotlight on the still life. And it, it was just such a peaceful environment for everybody. And the professor would go around and, and tell you how, you know, what technique and what you're doing right and wrong for each person. Um, and you know, general lectures about what to do and not to do. And so it was good that for, I, I don't know if everyone has taught this, I, I, it's pushed to draw something from life, like in person, um, but at the same time, the world is different now. Things move a lot faster, people expect things um, at a certain time. So they also, you know, recommended if you have a good camera and you set things up right and you have good lighting, um, then use the technology, use the camera. Um, so that's what I've been doing. Uh, that's how I keep up with the demand right now is going out and taking pictures, especially of wildlife. Um, because I've, I mean, I've sat there and drawn them and it's great and it's a fun exercise. Um, and that's what influenced the style I have right now. But I can't expect to, you know, I can't expect to expand on certain subjects uh, if I have to do that in life in person all the time. I have to be able to take that picture and then the animal, you know, can run off and do its thing and then I can move around and do more. You know, you know um, I've, I've ever since I've seen some of your artwork and then I knew that that's what you did was go out and take pictures. Some of the animals, I'm like, please God, Tess, please, you're not out there taking pictures of wolves in the middle of the forest. I, okay, I'm so... Yeah, not all of them are in the wilds. I go to a nature center that's like 20 minutes away, the um, WNC Nature Center, um, for the more, because after a while, you know, it gets very repetitive. Like there's a lot of blue heron around here that I always love doing. Um, and there's black bear around here, which I love too. Um, but, you know, I'll go to the nature center and get, you know, the cougar and the gray wolf, because there's no way I have the time to look for those kind of animals, let alone, you know. I was just, I just get nervous. I'm like, please, please don't. I just in my, my head, I've got you like full rugged gear out in the Pacific yeah. Northwest. Like, <laughs> if I see a picture, yeah, I, if I see a picture of Big, if I see a picture of Bigfoot, I'm gonna start to worry. Okay, like, yeah. you're starting to go no, off the deep end. People worry. I have a grizzly, a few grizzly bear paintings and people worry. Um, they, it's another recurring thing that people say, they're like, Oh, you weren't that close. Were you? And it's like, no, I was across a river and I was in a van and I have a telephoto zoom lens. So I promise you it's all good. And it makes, it makes for a bad picture when you're that close to an animal anyways, because they'll well, be threatened. So, I mean, you actually, you actually seeing these in the wild, like you're in a van for the, and the wood to, for um the bison pictures yeah. and the grizzly bear um i was in yellowstone i took a trip around the country for a little bit that that was after college um and that was after i stopped doing figurative work because i wasn't into it too much um i was in the studio all the time uh and you know it just it just didn't seem to click with me. I just felt like I couldn't really expand on anything, even though the stuff was good and people liked it, but I just didn't feel like it was me. So I stopped it for a bit. Um, and I, and I was second guessing being an artist too, because it's hard because you live, you know, month to month. I hope someone buys something. I hope someone gets a commission from me, you know, 
Um, so I was, it was a moment of, you know, questioning for myself. Explain to me what figurative, uh, was a figurative drawing was? Oh, okay. People, people. uh, the human body. The oh, is that when like naked That's... people sit up there? Yeah. It's like a very, it's a technical art term, I guess. Um, so, and it gets tossed around a lot. So I assume people know what I'm talking about, but yeah, it nudes like nude people up there, but it doesn't have to be nude. Like figurative is just like figure person, whole body, but you drew Whereas naked portrait people right? is the head. So you drew yeah. naked people there, right? I did. I drew naked. Is that, I've always wondered, like, I know it's got to be awkward for the, the person standing up there, but is it, it's probably even weirder for you guys to be like, okay, there's an the egg. The first person? time it was exciting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because it's like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's a naked person in this in front of everybody else. Like, it's like this, like, oh man, this is like forbidden, you know? This is like, you're not supposed to see this. Right. But you get into focus real quick. Like, it's all about the structure first, and then you move on to the next thing and the next thing and the next scene. So it really doesn't take long to like, you know, get out of that. Hmm. Um, and for the person, it you know, it depends on the person who's modeling in terms of like if they're nervous or not, because some people are nervous, but then some people have been, you know, that's what they do to make extra money is just mo model all the time. So they're like, whatever. And they, you mean, you just sit up there for hours. And so, at a certain point, you start to relax, and then it's like, okay, so cool, yeah, then it's no big deal. But <laughs> right. yeah. um, but I've heard of, I've heard of moments too happening with people, and you just you know like what like what are some moments? Well, of course, there's the guy who's going to get an erection, <laughs> like while he's. <laughs> This is what you really wanted to talk about, isn't it? It's uh, just... <laughs> not exactly, but uh, that is that is interesting. I, I didn't think uh, we were going there, but... Uh... No, I think, I think the, you know, I think if you have a good professor, they know what to do, and they know how to be like, okay, like, time for a break, everyone, <laughs> or, you know, something like that. But I've never had stuff like that happen to me before, but... Yeah. Okay, cold shower. Cold yeah. shower. <laughs> Everyone, look away. You yeah. Use the locker room. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank God that didn't happen to me. So uh, yeah. I was, and another thing I was going to ask. So, what was your l absolute least favorite uh, studio that you had to go into and learn about? Uh, like least favorite studio, like class, yeah. kind of like section, like form of art. Yeah. Um, I'm really not a woodworker <laughs> at all. I, I don't like working with, uh, saws and dangerous equipment. Um, I mean, I know you have to get past a certain barrier and it's fine, but you know, even just like, like, I, I just don't find it exciting or fun to think about building a chair or like just you know really? working in that way and mentally thinking in that way yeah. <laughs> it's just not my thing so that's good cool. um but metalworking and i never got a chance to take it for some reason they didn't have it available at school but like metal smithing um i think it because it's a bit more organic to me like the forming um the process the heating process um, I feel like I would have enjoyed that if that were available. So, um, hmm. well, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I think, I think, I think the, cause you, I've seen some, what did I see recently where it was like this amazing, um, it looked like a native American, but it, it was in metal and it was just slices. Have you seen that? Oh yeah. I think I know what you're it's talking like, about. It's like three, it's it, very, like very machine, like a printout. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was fascinating. Like, yeah, oh, well, yeah. the thing is, I respect 3D design a whole lot. I mean, it's not just this one plane you work off of. It's the entire, I mean, you have to circle it and it has to look good all the way around. Um, and I feel like with a lot of sculpture, um, because they seem more real, because it's right there in front of you, I think sometimes it makes a huge impression on you. Like even from people who don't really understand 
art that much or are into the art world like if you have a really good like installation or something where you have to walk through and it's like this new environment that someone created i i mean i think that's amazing and awesome um, and I would love to do an installation and think about well, what kind of environment do I want to make completely that's, you know, in yeah. reality yeah. instead of in, you know, a two dimension. That's awesome. So, All right. So yeah. uh, this is a little off the script, but your favorite historical piece of art and why? Or why maybe one that um, was most impactful to you? The, you know, the funny thing is I was never exposed to like art or art shows as a kid at all so you just know about like the general artists like van gogh and da vinci but even something like that um you know everyone has something that they connect to as a child and you know even though van gogh is really popular like to me that was just a marvelous world that he created and to go into it and then to zoom out and see the paint strokes so then it's like that back and forth of like going into a world and then coming out of it and realizing it's, it's a painting um that made a huge impression on me as a kid and i even started painting like him because i love the patterns that he created um, I love this. It, they sparkled to me, mm. you know? So when I saw his paintings, at, I think it was like a show in, um, you know, the Met or something like that. It was, or um, it, it just, and they were so small, but that was like a very intimate, like moment for me, like my entire childhood, like looking at these images and then seeing this work in person, um, it, it made me understand why people have emotional connections to art. So, um, and then Da Vinci's drawings, um, I, I always think of his drawings in the back of my mind whenever I'm sketching, because I think his sketches are perfect. I think his studies are absolutely perfect. I mean, I'm not too into his painting so much um, as his studies. So, um, and, and yeah, that may seem generic to say those artists, but at the same time, I wasn't exposed, you know, to anything anything of the art world i mean my mom and dad didn't even know about art shows they don't know any artists you know so um they gave me a really good kids books illustrative work um like tim burton's nightmare before christmas book like that made an impression on me as a kid um there are a few other works and i forget the authors or the illustrators but really detailed realistic kids like illustrations um, I wanted to draw like that. So it was just like anything like that, anything simple that I could, you know, be inspired by visually was just, just made a huge impression on me. And it drove me to be like that kind of artist. So yeah, but you don't have to, you know, be involved in this like niche kind of art world in order to get an impression, you know, from, from other work. So awesome. yeah. Um, yeah. So what do you think were some of the biggest obstacles well, in high school and in college for you to become the person you are today? Like, what did you have to overcome? I, I had to um, realize that things weren't just going to be handed to me, um, especially since, like I said, I wasn't exposed to a lot of stuff as a kid. Um, I had, I realized that it needed to, I needed to rely on myself in order to expose myself to things and to, um, you know, dive into this career. I needed to do work outside of school. I needed to do my own research. I needed to look at other artists. Um, so, and that was a huge, I mean, I, I still struggle with that, but that was something that I had to realize very early on in order to really pursue what I was doing. So, yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. Um, what did you do after college and why did you make that decision? Uh, after college, well, it was during college that I um, took an internship just like I thought any person should while they're in college, um, like any other career um, for a major artist in town. 
um, where I met uh, a couple of great coworkers who also were establishing a gallery in town um, in the River Arts District, which is a community of artists in Asheville. Um, it's just full of studio spaces where people work and you get to walk in and see them working and see their different galleries. Um, so I was very lucky um, to not only see that internship, but apply for it and get it and then meet those amazing people. Um, so they asked me to also work in their little gallery and then I could draw if I wanted to and I could sell my work there if I wanted to. So when I graduated, I had a studio space. I had uh, a wall up to sell work. Um, we all took turns watching the gallery um, and selling each other's work. Um, but I felt like I was exactly where I should be. Um, which is extremely lucky, especially for an artist. It's like not only, you know, did I land a job, but I'm also using my degree at the same time. So it's like, you can't say that with any other career either. Um, so I worked in the River Arts District for a year. Um, and that's when I was still doing, you know, people portraits and experimenting. Um, and then I, that's when I also started to have doubt, you know, they raised the rent in the studio. Um, they did all around here because this place was becoming a lot more popular. Um, so that kind of got me thinking about, well, do I really want to do this anymore? And then that's when I took that road trip and mm. looked at the landscape and discovered the animals. Um, I worked at a craft gallery at the same time. So it was like coming from a very like conceptual way of thinking about art to a more craftsman thinking um, artisan viewpoint. So like doing a quality job on the artwork, like not really playing around so much with the paint or the concept as much as like making a product that's, you know, good to display um, a quality product that you can make over and over and over again. Um, so that was a really, um, good education for me was working at that craft gallery and seeing the other side of art because they keep them kind of separated uh, the fine art versus you know craft art which they mesh all the time um Especially but, there, yeah. yeah but it got me thinking like you know in terms of selling like how do i sell this product instead of this magical special painting that you know, only I can do and no one else and it comes from me. So it's going to be expensive. And so it kind of humbled me a bit in, in working in that gallery. Um, and that's when I, you know, that was also a good connection. They allowed me to show my paintings there. Um, so after college, I just, you know, I got really lucky. I kept myself involved in the game. I kept myself um, involved in drawing and painting after work all the time even though it sucked sometimes, even though I didn't really feel like doing it. I mean, I had my stuff up in the living room to make sure I would go straight to it after work, even though I was tired. Um, so I, I just felt like I didn't have a choice. It's like, what else am I gonna do, you know? Um, so, and then after working in the craft gallery and saving some money, I mean, I worked there for like four years. So I was able to save and really think about more of what I wanted to do, make connections with other people. Um, that's when, you know, I got an offer to work for an artist yet again in the River Arts District, the same place that I started. So I moved in with him, started selling my work at his place, um, at his gallery, then started working there as an artist so I can draw and paint as I could sell things. Um, and then bided my time until I was able to find a studio here. And that's what happened in February um, in the River Arts District again, except by myself in my own studio. Um, so it just... You know, like I said, I just felt like I didn't have a choice. And yeah, I had doubts about art um, at a certain point there, but at the same time, it's like I just needed to find a different subject matter. You know, it's like, oh, it makes sense that I should draw animals because I've always loved animals. It's like, duh. But, you know, in college, they, you know, for me at least, they, you know, steered me into a direction. Oh, you're really good at people and portraits, so you should do that. So then that's what I did. But, you know, in that sense, I kind of lost myself in terms of what I really wanted to draw and paint. Um, so, yeah, I just kept at it. That's awesome. So, Speaking yeah. of, um, do you have any pieces that you can show that you're extremely proud of that, um, I don't know, maybe someone could purchase? I, yes. Um... 
This one, oh, this is my newest one. Um, I wasn't sure at first this is another direction I'm going in because I'm using collage now. So now I get to experiment. And now I feel like now that I'm in my own space, I get to, you know, I'm not surrounded by these other artists. So I get to do what I really want. Um, so, and I like very subtle things too. Um, so I started this deer and it's very, very subtle, but I have my notes in there. Um, that I've uh, put into the piece. Um, I ripped out things from my journal and put it in too, so it's a bit intimate. Um, I saw this deer going to uh, this new property that I moved on to out in Marshall, North Carolina, which is on, in my property is in Pisgah National Forest. Um, and I saw this deer driving home and I had my camera with me, luckily. Um, so I was able to take this picture of her um, before she ran away. So I love that fleeting moment too of just this like capture um, and then she's gone, you know. Wow. Um, so That's gorgeous. It's, it's um, yeah, conceptually really special to me. And also, um, like I said, I like to keep things very minimal, but at the same time, I like to put secrets in there. Um, so it, it's better to see in person, but yeah, that's, that's something. Um, and I love this squirrel I did. Oh, wow. Um, so, and there's a little bit of gold at the bottom. It looks like it's kind of aged, but it's not. Um, I like that effect too, of uh, making it seem a little bit older, like parchment paper or something, um, you know, like an artifact or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also, I love, keeping everything um all the line work is from start to finish and i don't i cover it up but i cover it up very thinly so you can see my decisions make up the entire form um so it's like a transparent way of like showing people you know it's like keeping it honest i that's, think that's, um, that's awesome so and then i love the movement too you know because they they're that's a thing with the photograph is um you have a tendency to keep things very still um, if you're drawing um, and you have to move away from that. And the way that I do it is I just do a bunch of, you know, gestural strokes all around it um, so that it looks like he's still, I mean, they're still alive, you know, they're not just the static thing. Um, so, yeah. Well, that's awesome. So how many how many pieces do you currently have up up for sale right now? Um, I mean, there's got to be like at least twenty in my studio, and a few more at another gallery um, by the river. Um, there's at least ten there. Um, so yeah, there's there's a bit. I have a, I have a good stock. So. <laughs> Um, that's awesome yeah. all right so uh, what are your plans for the future like what what's your goals so um right now the district is all about people coming in and out of your studio while you're working and you talk to them and they talk to you and um so you get to see the artist in person and you get to talk to them um, but I would really like to be more isolated than that. I like to not have to rely on people walking in and me figuring out whether or not they're serious about buying or not. Um, it's good right now because it's like, you know, people feel kind of guilty about coming in and not buying anything. But at the same time, it's like, you know, it's like a visual library. Like they get to look around and I feel like it's a service to people to provide art to look at instead of having to pay to look at things yeah it's almost um, like it's almost like live entertainment in a way like they come they come yeah, in to get entertained but it's but it's quiet you know it's yeah. not like this loud thing um i mean so so people think it's boring sometimes um which is fine but at the same time like i feel that as i'm working and if there are a lot of people who don't understand and i try to explain things and it's hard sometimes especially since 
that's not what is on their mind. They come to the River Arts District because it's a destination and they want to know what restaurants to go to, what bars to go to, and I have to, you know, kind of cater to that. So I'd like to have like a separate studio space that's just for me and just working and no one else to disturb me. Um, and then have like a show space where people can walk in. And um, But you know, right now I'm having to rely on these walk-ins, like I said, because sometimes people ask for commissions and things and it's great. Um, and I'd like to have time to do more research, to do more like, you know, I call it field work, I guess, but it doesn't, I mean, if it's so fun to go out and to see these animals, it's like, it doesn't feel like work at all, but I need to have more time to experience that because I feel pressured to be in here, you know, like I'm the artist and also the salesman. Um, if I'm not here, I don't make any money. So it's like, you know, that weird kind of guilt trip that happens. Um, so for me to have that solitary space and then go out when I want to, when I need more references, when I need more experiences, that is like perfect. I am perfectly content just drawing on my life. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so. All right. So let's move on to some of the last one uh, with the recommendations. Then we'll get to the Q and A because there's a bunch. Um, if anyone okay. is. <laughs> Is looking into studying art, are there any materials you can recommend, books, podcasts, shows, or anything? Yeah, um, so I got this book from school, and I really enjoy it because it's short and it's straight to the point. Um, the Practical Handbook for the Emerging Artist has been really great. Um, and this is fine art stuff. This isn't like, you know, this is like doing shows and things, having artist statements, um, applying for grants. Um, so I, I always go back to this book whenever I feel lost and I'm like, oh, I need to, to do something, um, work on something. Um, I also love the site called Call for Entry. It's a site where you get a listing of all the different call for artists, like their shows that are happening in every state, um, it gives you the fee. It tells you what the show is about. Um, you make a profile and you put your artwork up and then you apply to these different shows. Um, so that's great. I do that all the time. Um, there's that whole like galleries can be weird. Galleries can um, have certain stipulations, um, certain tricks that you may not be aware of. Um, so I go to Wet Canvas, which is an online forum. So if you have any questions, like I had this gallery come up with some re weird rule and it wasn't even in the contract. And so I was able to go on that online forum and anonymous, anonymously, you know, ask, is this like what galleries normally do? And someone responded and was like, no, this is never, you should never do business with them again. So, and you can ask about materials. Um, so that's great. Um, so those are a few easy ones. Um, in terms of books, um, I, I haven't read Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, but I heard that's good um, in terms to keep up with your technical skill and some good exercises. Um, because I already learned that in college, um, I like the, what is it, the science, the art and science of drawing or something. Uh, I wrote it down. The practice of science and drawing. Um, it may seem, seem like I don't look at that book because I don't know the title, but I do look at it all the time. Um, it's a really good reminder in terms of like what, you know, in terms of like realism um, in drawing, like what's technically, you know, the different techniques and everything. Um, I, I loved how the writer talked about, you know, touching something is important in order to get a sense of how to draw it. You know, touching the texture, um, which is something I didn't even learn in school, was that kind of sense was like, you know, touching the fur to really get a sense of the softness or the coarseness of the fur in order to draw it. Because drawing is kind of like sculpting in a way, um, you know, it, and that's hard to uh, explain <laughs> to, to to people that it's like sculpting, but it's like sculpting in a 2D plane. Like you get very action oriented, um, you know, harder marks create darker lines. So it's um, in like, you know, that that book, it 
basically reminds me to, to work in that way instead of like focusing on, you know, like perspective and cause that's like the board like making the lines first and then like, like I hate I hate that stuff I hate measuring things with my pencil I just go for it I just have to you know it, it, it makes me feel stiff if I have to like think of these certain rules to begin with um, so that book is really good about whenever I want to I can bounce in and out of it and realize oh it's okay to work in this way too um, so everything else I mean you know, I learned a lot from honestly talking to people, um, having a community, um, finding a community online. Um, I think that's the best way to learn with other people who are also learning with other people you can ask questions to immediately um, instead of having to look things up. Other people who will tell you stuff that you wouldn't even know to ask to begin with. Um, so that's, I, I mean, I've you can find it online, uh, meeting people, going to a live drawing event, if there ever is one. I mean, it depends on your location. You know, some people just don't have that kind of stuff. Um, but maybe there's one like a few hours away to drive to one night and it will be totally worth your time. Um, or else, like I said, I mean, that's what's great about the internet world now is you can find that stuff and have people to talk to. And Tess, have I'm totally next year in june or july have you ever been to heroes con in charlotte no you have to come they do <laughs> they do uh they do uh like every day and then they do and then they have like a massive art piece so they'll do like a, a, a someone come up and live draw for the for the day and then yeah. at, and then they have all the artists uh because it's all about art like uh comic book artists but also indie artists like nature we bought like some gorgeous um like little uh cardinal birds and nature drawings there you have to come yeah. by and check it out next year we haven't been in a while but i didn't know they were doing that stuff yeah, it's, there yeah it's it's amazing it's amazing well, well there you go it's like that stuff is starting to pop up all the time now too i mean people i think more people are appreciating art you know nowadays than they they used to it's like cycled back for some reason so that's great. I mean, yeah, a live painting event. I mean, everyone who will appreciate it will go and ask questions and then you can connect with people. Um, when is that happening? <laughs> uh, I think it happens at the end of June, like June 17th, 19th. Okay, around so then. there's time. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's plenty of time. So we'll, I'll, I'll hit you up and we'll, we'll all go because we haven't yeah. been uh, in a few years. Uh, all yeah. right, so let's get to the audience Q&A. We have a bunch. Um, okay. First one, do you picture things in your mind like a scenery or only work from photos and people? I do both. Okay. Um, sometimes I picture things first and then I'll start painting it out and then I'll correct it with photographs in terms of the proportion. Um, and, and because I have to have things in proportion in terms of like the animals, like the head has to be the right size compared to the neck, compared to the body. Um, and I have done some abstract work before too. And I have done illustrative work where I don't look at references. Like I've gotten really good at drawing blue hair in because I see them all the time. I have tons of photos. I painted them all the time. So I start off just drawing a blue heron and, and leave it sometimes um, because I've drawn it so often, I've memorized um, the different parts. Um, other times, if it's a really good photograph that inspires me, I'll start with the photograph um, and then I'll put the photograph down and then I'll do my own thing on top of it because I don't want it to be like the, you know, photographed exactly. Like I, it needs to be in my own world in my own way. Um, and I get frustrated when it's just working from the photographs anyways. It's just not what I want, you know, to happen. I need to do what feels right. And, you know, when it's time to put down the photograph, I just do my thing. And that's when it feels amazing, too, is when you've got great music on and you just go for it. Um, because, you know, I think from my training, like I have a sense of how things should be you know, in terms of like composition, where things are placed, how things should look, you know, how complete they should look. So yeah, it's both, both ways. Cool. Uh, what's your most favorite item you created? My, like my favorite painting? Yeah, I guess, yeah. Ever? 
I still like the one that's up here. Um, I mean, there was one that I liked that sold. It was a portrait I did of my friend and it was like the perfect, it was exactly how I wanted it to look. Um, but this one was great too. This is a figurative <laughs> piece, <laughs> but it was when I was, um, oh, there's reflection going on here. I don't know if you could see it down at the bottom. It's like crouching with the hand over the face and the arm coming through. Uh -huh. You can see that. And then it just kind of goes abstract, like from the head upwards. Wow. Um, and for me, that was like, I had like severe wanderlust, but I didn't have any money. And that's what's great about art is, you know, you put it out in your artwork. So I scratched it up, I painted over it. Um, and I love how I did the figure at the bottom. I love how I drew it. Um, the gold was something bold that I never do um, because I don't want anything flashy, but at the same time, um, I just loved, you know, it's that same kind of sense of like old or artifact or something, you know, that was long ago cherished. Um, so I, some, I, I don't know if I'm, I didn't have it for sale for years. I was going to say, so, like, I know how it is. Like when I create, like the times that I've created a song, right. Where I'm like, this is everything I want. I never yeah. let anybody hear it in a way. Like I'll yeah. just like I'll just be like, okay, well that's that's for me. That's gonna stay. Yeah. I like that. I don't know if anybody else will. Don't care. That's gonna yeah. go right there. Like it's yeah. like a baby in a way, right? Yeah, and I even I I mean I have a painting up in um um I, well in my camper. I live in a camper. I live in a trailer camper, a uh, vintage one, like a tiny house. But I have oh, one <laughs> there. <laughs> a little tidbit there. Um. And it, it's a copy of a painting. Um, they call it a master copy. It's like an exercise you do uh, where you paint, you copy off of another painter, like a famous painter or any painter that you want. You copy them so you get a sense of how they painted it. And there's one I did, and um, and uh, of course I forget his name now, but um, it's it's a portrait of someone looking down, and that. You don't see a portrait like that a lot. Usually it's very just like, you know, portrait or side profile. But to have it looking down is, it's like a, I don't know. It, it got to me. It made me feel like this person is in their own head, which is what I um, tend to feel like. So that's sitting in my camper right now and it's not for sale. I'll probably put it up for sale eventually, but it, it hasn't been for sale either. So, wow. and I don't have a picture of it, so. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, next question. What would you say to an art student who is being told by their parents to major in something else because an art career might not be stable? I mean, it's true. It's an true. art career may not be stable. You know, you have to be smart about it. You have to know what you have to be honest with yourself. Um, you have to be honest with what people tell you. You have to look for honest people who tell you the truth about your work and your skill or um, so it's understandable that parents will not want you to do this. But at the same time, like I was told, I mean, I thought, you know, my parents pressured me to do graphic design because at least like, yes, it's creative, but at the same time, it, it's something a bit more stable. But I tried it and I was on the computer and I didn't like not drawing the physical process of drawing all the time. It just seemed like another extra thing to have to go to the computer and then rely on the computer. Um, so the fact that I didn't let it go, it just proved to everybody that it, it just wasn't going to be gone. So I think if it's just a part of your life and you have it in yourself then you make it stable for yourself. I mean, I still had to do full-time jobs until now and I'm 29, you know, because I didn't feel secure because I thought it was an unstable thing too, but I, I could have broken away so much earlier. I mean, I, because I just kept doing it and I, and I, you know, listened to feedback from people. That's extremely important. Um, 
because you don't have to go like every, a lot of people expect to be super realistic, but there's so many styles out there. It's infinite. I mean, they're looking for you. A person who buys artwork is looking for you in that painting. Um, I mean, there's pieces of artwork where, you know, from other artists where I've been like, oh, like secretly, like, I'm not really into that, but someone buys it immediately. I mean, you never know what people are gonna like. So even stuff that I've had, and I thought about painting over them completely and starting again, but then someone will come in and buy it. So it, you just, you have to know in yourself that this is what you're supposed to do. And that's all there is to it, you know. Uh, you have to expect to have different jobs, but that kind of makes life more interesting for me too, to have different jobs to go to. Um, so it, it's a it's a lifestyle and not everyone likes it. Um, so it, it, yeah, it's all about what you want to do. All right, let's see what I want to get to. So I, let's see. All right, are there any types of media you were required to use in college that you wish you kept up with and still produce today? Um, I wish, no, I don't. I mean, I was thinking like oil painting at first, like we used it very, very, very briefly in college. Um, and I did acrylic painting too. But I really have come to like acrylic painting and it works with the way that I paint because I'm really fast and I like painting in layers, not waiting for stuff to dry. Um, I think not really, hmm. I experimented with markers in college, which they promoted because they were like, oh, this is new and we don't know how to tell you how to work at this. <laughs> which is why I stopped it because I didn't really get a lot of advice and I had to do a lot of research for myself. And I wasn't sure because, you know, it wasn't like the typical traditional form that you would use. It seemed like kind of juvenile to be using markers, but I feel like I want to start that again because you can do whatever you want. Um, so yeah, I think definitely go back to markers. Markers. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, it was like oil painting, acrylic, um, and I did the markers, um, graphite, charcoal. I would like to go back to charcoal. That was great. Um, yeah, it, it, w it wasn't like very expansive in terms of like all kinds of materials. It was more about like different art classes, like ceramics and, you know, um, maybe if I knew more about different materials, I would, I would think differently, you know, so, um, this, I mean, this is my chance to experiment now, so I'll see what happens, but All yeah, right. I hope that answers the question. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Um, so we'll, there's some, I, I'm not going to get to, but, uh, uh, I'm sure, uh, they can reach out to you. I'm guessing if, if yeah. they have any. Uh, so last question, what do you recommend to someone who is not a professional artist, but enjoys drawing and wants to improve? Um, we did a really great, I mean, you just draw all the time as much as you can um, to improve. I mean, practice makes perfect. Um, and even playing around is great too. Um, like I said, it doesn't have to be realistic. Um, so I think learning to step back and stop being so hard on yourself and just enjoy like even just the mark making and looking at other people's work, all ranges, um, things that are abstract and you're like, what, they did that? But at the same time, it's like, you know, that's considered a great piece of artwork. And it's like, why not you do it too? Um, so we did a great exercise um, in school where you would draw something every day on a huge sheet of paper. Um, and you would end up drawing on top of stuff. And it looked really cool when you were done. Um, I think it was like the 60, 365 day drawing exercise. So every day for the entire year, you would draw something on that large sheet of paper. Um, so that's a great way to like get you going on drawing every day is having that project and taping it on your wall and having the pencil and eraser ready and just going for it. Um, 
And then, like I said, you know, not being too hard on yourself about it. There's, there's an infinite amount of ways you can draw things. Um, so just enjoying it and keeping it like it, it's a pastime, you know, it's a thing to do in your free time. It's a thing to do when you're upset, when you're happy, um, to listen to music to, to watch a movie to, which is what I would do, um, is, you know, go home, put on a movie that I liked and then just kind of be drawing on the couch, um, you know, like knitting or something like it, it can even be something mindless, like just a repetitive motion in that produces great works of art too. I mean, I have a hard time with repetitive stuff um, because I didn't do a lot of that. So that's something I need to practice more is like being patient enough to like, because there are a bunch of leaves I have to draw sometimes. And maybe it would look better if I, you know, sat down and did something repetitive like that. So yeah, just keep going with it. Awesome. Um, well, it was been it's been amazing talking to you, Tess, and I'm definitely going to take you to Heroes Con. But uh, yeah. before we let you go, uh, tell everybody where they can find you, where they can buy your stuff, what you got coming yeah. up, and uh, yeah. Well, you can look at my website, um, TessDarlingFineArt.com. Um, I have Instagram and Facebook, which is also TessDarlingFineArt.com. Um, and like I said, I, I have a studio that's open for, you know, the public to walk in, um, in Asheville, North Carolina, uh, which a lot of people are visiting nowadays because it's a really cool place, um, in the River Arts District. That's where my studio is, is really happening. Um, so I'm in the Phil Mechanic building, um, Suite MA, if anyone is ever in town. And I'm usually there. Wednesday to Sunday. Um, it could be kind of sporadic too because I'm my own boss and I can do whatever I want, but I'm usually there. <laughs> so, yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Tess. I'll let you get off here and uh, we'll definitely connect again sometime. Yes. Soon. Yes. All right, Tess. Thank you. Have a good one.